Laura, and thank you for joining myself, Lisa Viz, and our Beyond Recruitment team this morning. Our webinar today, in partnership with Megan Jenkins, is very topical and pertinent to the changing and challenging times so many private businesses, public sector organizations, and many people are experiencing. As we are aware, organizational changes are impacting job roles and job security in very tough market conditions. Alongside job security, there also continues to be ongoing change in organizations due to technology, including, for example, the emergence of generative artificial intelligence, Gen AI, which is transforming systems, processes, how we work, and the required skill sets to do our jobs. In this session, Megan brings a behavioral, a behavioral science approach from organizational psychology, providing you with research and tools to build a resilient and adaptive mindset for the future. Megan is a member of the Institute of Organizational Psychology, IOP, a branch of the New Zealand Psychological Society, and in 2024 was awarded fellow membership with the Society in recognition of her expertise in her profession. Megan has over 20 years experience as a registered organizational psychologist, bringing in-depth understanding of human behavior, leadership, and organizational change. Megan's psychology and coaching background helps people gain greater change resilience to navigate through uncertainty. And we are certainly facing uncertain times at the moment. Just um, a note to say that this will be an interactive webinar. So you are welcome to submit questions throughout the webinar. Megan will have visibility of the questions during the webinar and will work through some of these throughout her presentation. In case you've missed any parts of the webinar, please don't worry. Um, we will be recording the webinar and we'll send this through to you as an attendee uh, in, in the next number of days. You are welcome to share this recording with your colleagues or team members. It now gives me great pleasure to hand you over to Megan to proceed with this morning's topical content. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Lisa, for the introduction. Um, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Um, thank you to Beyond Recruitment as well for hosting this. I appreciate that people who have joined have come from different organizations, different sized organizations as well, across both public and private sector. And that, um, you know, we know that the, the words organizational change spark different emotions for people and different thoughts for people. Um, but certainly we know that there is a lot of organizational change around today. Um, and so hopefully this webinar will give you some tips and tools to help manage that both on a personal level um, through your work life and also for those who are in leadership positions as well. So um, today what I'm going to cover is really looking at that whole changing nature of work. Uh, we'll start off by providing a little bit of a context around that and around some of the key changes that are taking place. And then, as I mentioned, move forward to really looking at how do you how do you navigate this personally in your work life and then finish up with some tips for businesses and leaders as well. Um, as Lisa mentioned, feel free to uh, post some questions or thoughts in the chat. I will do my best to um, switch between my views on my laptop and have a look at those too. Um, but apart from that, um, there'll be questions uh, that can be circulated afterwards anyway, if we don't manage to, to get to all of them today. Look at the backdrop as to why we're all here today and have a look at the changing nature of work. So we know that there is a lot of change which is occurring, but let's just stop for a minute and think about actually these changes have been coming over the past few years anyway. And certainly if we think back over the last sort of 10, 20 years, we know that tech change has been a key change which has been operating in organisations. 
Sure, now we've got more of that digital transformation, including AI. Um, we've got more systems and services moving to the cloud. And that is requiring different skills. Um, but remember that, you know, change has been around in organisations for a long time. So really, um, I think that that's a key backdrop to think about is that we have been on this change journey. So sure, I'm sure that all of us can think about things that we could perhaps be doing better ourselves and as leaders in organisations, but do also stop and take a minute to think about what are some of the learnings that you've had so far? And what are some of the things that you actually do implement well? Because I think it's important to recognize that and to keep doing those things, as well as think about how we can, of course, improve in what we do. So digital transformation and AI, um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, we've had robotics in organizations. Uh, you know, I recall a time when I was working for an organization and they created some robotics, um, which enabled um, actually screening of uh, invoices, etc. And so that was really useful in terms of automation and the speed of response that then was going to go out to the customer. You know, now I think the challenge is that there's more talk around the likes of ChatGPT or uh, Microsoft Copilot and other generative AI systems that are coming in. Uh, and I think that that's really creating a bit of a culture of fear as well. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in the future um, in the future slides. Um, but we've also got some other key drivers around, you know, we know that with moving to the cloud that there's threat around cyber and privacy issues. You know, we've just got to think about the week before last, I think it was around the CrowdStrike outage. Um, and we know that that whole data loss is huge for organizations. You know, it's a critical component for organizations' reputation and then really their sustainability as well, just to make sure that they are tight in those areas. Um, you may remember back in March this year that MediaWorks had a data breach and that resulted in, uh, you know, some Kiwis personal details being stolen from MediaWorks as well. And then of course, post COVID and the post pandemic world, uh, you know, we've got the challenges around hybrid working still. So, you know, often when I think about change in organizations, you know, a lot of it can be those water cooler moments in terms of how people stay connected and supported or how people feel informed. So I think the challenge there is really thinking about how do you do this in a hybrid working um, environment where people are kept informed of what some of the key changes are and what the impacts will be, but also how do you keep connected and how do you make sure that as a leader, you're supporting your people through change, but also as a team member, that you're actually providing that really critical support and sense of team to each other as well. Two points there. You know, we are entering a world where with that digital advancement, there um, is greater expectations, I think, uh, you know, on organizations to produce better customer and employee experiences. And the organizations that I think are at the forefront of this will be the ones that will excel. So have a think about where you are in your organization around this and what you could do to move that dial. Um, and then, of course, you know, with the whole digital uh, landscape, you know, we are talking about moving into a world where that innovation and adaptiveness is really key too. And once again, I think that the organizations that do this well will be the ones that will be the top performers in this. Okay, so let's have a look then at what some of the um, challenges and opportunities are. So, uh, you know, we've talked about many of these challenges here, and I think that, you know, it's really easy when we're facing into change to really think about challenges as obstacles. But I think that it's also really important to balance that out and actually think about, 
you know, what are the opportunities that are actually provided to the organisation as part of this? Um, all too often, I think that we see change as a negative word, um, but it's important in terms of our adaptiveness going forward, both as individuals and as an organisation, to really think about um, how this could present as an opportunity going forward. So what are the benefits for me personally dipping into the world of AI? Uh, for example, we know that, um, you know, Microsoft Copilot uh, has great benefits in terms of taking away some of that uh, routine work and allowing people that uh, greater innovation or greater analytical thinking or greater collaboration with people as well. And we do see as we're moving through change that it does enable greater career paths for people and greater opportunities for learning and career development. So my challenge really is to, um, you know, for everybody to think about what can be the opportunities for you as well as for your organization around this. And just another note there is that um, we know in this world of great change that it will be the organizations that have got really sound and mature change management systems um, and processes uh, and the organizations that really encourage their, this adaptive mindset that once again will be the ones that will come through this um, better. So once again, um, another challenge for you in your roles and in your organizations to really think about how you can be embedding this better change management maturity. Let's um, take a little bit of a break for now and look at um, a first poll that we've got. So just have a think about some of the things that I've talked about and some of that context in your worldview today. So what is your main concern at the moment about changes impacting you at work? So this could be from an organizational point of view, um, it could be the amount of change, um, or it could be on a personal level, some concern that you have. Um, please just don't include any confidential work or personal information. So we'll just take a moment for that. Um, and I know that this will be collated afterwards and um, will be sent around to everybody. Great, well, I hope that um, there are some uh, responses coming through there. Um, I'll just delete the poll from my screen in case people can actually see that. Um, right, well, let's move forward and uh, go further into the presentation here. So um, really interesting here is that, uh, you know, when we talk about work changes, that there's actually been some really important research which has been done by the World Economic Forum. So when we are thinking forward about what the future landscape really looks like, the World Economic Forum have um, done some research around what the top 10 skills are going to be for 2025. And they also said that in five years time, more than a third of the skills that we believe are essential for today's workforce will have changed. So we know that there's going to be continual disruption in terms of how organizations operate. So this um, is likely to result in organizational change, including restructuring or reshuffling. Um, and we also know that this digital and technological change is still going to continue, including the emergence of more AI. Um, however, many experts believe that there's going to be a complementary nature 
of AI alongside humans. So once again, um, you know, I think that uh, it's all too easy to have that initial reaction around fear about what the future holds. Um, but it's not like we're going to turn up tomorrow to work and then all of a sudden there's going to be the walking robots around. Remember that change is always a transition. Um, so I think that it's important and really key to be thinking about these future skill sets and start making a plan yourself around how you can track towards this. Or if you're in a leadership position, certainly how can you create these uh, future skill sets within your organization. Um, we've also got some further research from McKinsey. So they talk about how uh, in five years time, sort of around about 2030, that there's going to be a lot of new and emerging roles. So probably about eight or 9% of new occupations. So once again, though, though they will be new occupations. Remember that some of the skill sets are still going to just um, tweak a little bit anyway um, and develop uh, as um, the next few years continue. Um, you know, I think also in organizations, you know, we've seen uh, a lot of a lot of changes around the digital cloud. Um, you know, they're even, uh, you know, the new innovation is a really good thing to call out here too, that, um, you know, you've got the emergence of new technology and how that can produce greater innovation for human use. So, for example, I'm thinking about new materials, you know, the likes of Kathmandu have created water resistant products um, from uh, like the likes of jackets made from recycled plastics and things like this. So I think that continually it's going to be a landscape of really challenging organizations around this innovation, et cetera, as well. Um, so it's interesting also that, you know, the LinkedIn learning there talks about the most in-demand skills uh, and what has been searched for in 2024. And that key top skill has been that adaptability as well. So once again, I'd really encourage people to be thinking about how can you actually be more adaptable? And I know that from the World Economic Forum, they really talked about that key skill around resilience to change and that adaptive mindset. Uh, and that the organizations that are putting in training around change resilience are the ones that are going to be preparing their people the best. McKinsey, interestingly, also looked at some of these key skills and attitudes for the future and mapped them to different work-related outcomes. And they found that what they called were these self-leadership categories actually fared really well. So once again, if you're thinking about what are some of the skills that you can really focus on developing, um, these self-leadership skills, so the adaptability, the coping with uncertainty, they were actually linked with greater employment outcomes in the McKinsey study. And also the self-leadership category, so around self-motivation, and keeping well, so that sort of that wellness mindset around physical, but also mental wellness as well. Um, coping with uncertainty and also having self-confidence that they had the highest impact on people being more satisfied in their job. So some interesting thoughts to think about um, and to dip into some of the learning that you could do going forward. All right, well, let's move on now to really looking at, as an individual, how do I actually do this? And how do I actually create an adaptive approach to my own work life? And a good thing to think about is really borrowing here from um, organizational psychology, you know, really to think about what makes up yourself at work. Um, and I think a key thing going forward in, in terms of the skills that we all have is really building in that sense of self-reflection around who am I at work? 
you know, how am I doing as well at work? And what are some of the things that I might be able to grow and develop in so that I am more satisfied in my job, but also that I am doing well in my job as well and have a secure sense of my employment too. So this here is quite interesting to have a look at. Um, you know, we all know that abilities are really important in terms of what we can do. Um, you know, our job performance outcomes are based on how we perform at work. But that's not everything that makes up our work persona. It's obviously really important that we're doing things that we're interested in. Now, it might be that um, I like um, doing a particular skill, but actually it doesn't correlate with some of the outcomes that I want in terms of my job. Um, so do have a think about how are you balancing your interests at work, your passion at work, with actually some of your outside interests as well. Um, so think about yourself in terms of your work life, but then also your whole self as well. So it might be that, um, you know, some of the interests you have might be around outdoor pursuits, but that it's really difficult, like say, for example, you know, you live in a big city and it might be difficult to get employment um, in that area. Uh, so think about how you can balance it out in terms of your outside life as well. And then we all know that the personality drivers are important as well. So, um, you know, it may be that you're a big people person. So have a think as you go through your career around how does this manifest in the type of role that you've got? So it might be, therefore, that that sense of team is really important for you, and that might show up in one of your values as well. So we know that when some of our key values um, aren't present, that that's one of the key factors for us actually not feeling engaged and not feeling satisfied in our jobs. So that gives you some good insight in terms of how you can move forward to really self-reflect and build some self-awareness around yourself at work. Um, and sometimes, you know, there might be trade-offs as well, uh, but recognize that, you um, you know, I always think that it's good to reflect on what are the key uh, top two things that really might make a difference for you in terms of how you could go forward. And once again, relating this back to where we are today and the future ahead of us is really around how can you keep adapting? How can you keep using this as a key skill to really keep building your career going forward in terms of your work life. So I'll talk more about that um, in another minute, but for now, let's um, dip into our second poll, because interestingly, I'm sure that many of you come from different background areas, um, and that you yourself may have seen different career changes in your work life already. So um, this next poll, is just really interesting, I think, to look at where have you come from and how many different careers have you had? I know that probably begs the question around what is a career? Um, I would probably say um, that that is up a little bit to your individual interpretation, but it would probably be like a big segue, I think, in terms of um, a different a different career moving not necessarily moving different industries if you've had a similar job title um, but actually different awares so it might be from for example you've moved from being a, a builder into being a project manager in an organization or something like that so we'll just pause a moment um, and get you to respond to that. And just dipping into some of the Q&A as well. So Carol, you've asked about stress tolerance, resilience and flexibility, are they actual skills? 
they are actual skills. You know, I'd classify them as being um, those mental skills. Um, so around how you can reframe situations and how you can build that resilient um, skill set and resilient mindset. Great. Okay, well, let's move on. So thank you, everyone, for um, those who have answered that poll. That's going to be really interesting to see how that comes out. I can't wait to see that at the end of the webinar. It'll be really interesting. Um, okay, well, let's move on further to think about from an individual perspective, you know, how can you actually stay adaptive and build this adaptability into your work life? So um, specific to the question that Carol had, so that's really pertinent. Thank you for that, Carol. So when we talk about be building adaptiveness into our work life, you know, it's really about thinking, um, you know, what is that adaptive mindset piece that I've got? Um, I think that a key thing that I've learned and seen over my work life is that uh, more and more we can't be defined by our job title as such. You know, it's really important to be thinking about ourselves in terms of, in the previous slide, you know, what are the things that I'm passionate about? What are the things that really interest me? What are some of those personality factors that I kind of need to have in my role? So if I'm an extrovert, you know, it's really important that I have a team environment because I, I enjoy, you know, and get my energy from other people. Or, um, you know, I value myself being a really creative thinker. So I need to be in a role where I have that, um, ability to do that cre that creative and innovative thinking. So continue, I think, you know, we need to be thinking about ourselves in terms of our work life, not as our job title, but what are our transferable skills. So we know that um, from research that it's really important to be doing the self-reflection at different times during our life. You know, I've seen this happen where, you know, it might be coming up to your personal development conversation, um, you know, a six monthly or on an annual basis. And that's a good trigger for it. Um, other times I know that um, the self insight has come from moments where perhaps the change is out of our control. And it might be that you're facing into an organizational restructure and that actually um, creates that momentum for you to be thinking about, you know, where you are in your work life and perhaps um, what uh, what you're doing, you know, are you on track or, or perhaps, uh, you know, could you head in a different direction? But what we do know from research is that keeping that open mind around the future and around the opportunities and keeping that positive mindset are really key attributes to building resilience. So I think it's really important to acknowledge that, um, you know, once again, particularly when change is out of our hands and we feel like it's being done to us, that um, it can create those, that fear response. Um, you know, we know in terms of neuroscience that that's linked to the fight flight response, which is our real basic survival instinct as human beings. So that's important for us. Um, but also, you know, do try to think about um, how you can reframe that and how you can investigate or create the different uh, opportunities ahead of you as you go through your work life. So here I think, you know, remember those key skill sets that were shown from the World Economic Forum and also through McKinsey. You know, what is the learning mindset um, that you can do? Um, how can you actually learn to acknowledge and accept that change is here? And then what are those simple steps to actually um, go forward and actually help yourself through change as well? and feel empowered through change. 
I remember years ago when I was uh, doing some career transition work that, you know, one of the key differences that I saw between people who were more successful in being redeployed um, were actually those that were staying current in terms of their current work life. So here, I think it's important to just really um, stay current with what is happening in the external world, world and some of the emerging trends. Uh, you know, look for those opportunities. As I've talked about, what are your transferable skills? Um, you know, often, and once again, you know, I draw on the fact that when we hear about that word change, you know, People can have that fear response, but actually change can also be a positive thing. It can lead to new learning. It can lead to um, us feeling revitalized in our work life as well. You know, think about challenging yourself. Um, I know I've seen this sometimes when, when people um, say, gosh, you know, I should have make, made the move into a different career or into a different type of job role many years ago. I wish I'd done it years ago. So think about how you can just stay one step ahead really for yourself. Goal setting is really important and that continual need to reflect and, uh, and reassess as well. So here I think, you know, it's really important to kind of um, take stock of what's really going to motivate you as you go forward in your work life. Um, once again, I remember when I was doing career transition work and, and I'd often say to people, uh, you know, what do you want to get out of your career? And sometimes I'd get the response to, from people that said, no, I actually really don't like that word career. So have a think about what does that word mean for you? So it doesn't always mean that upward transition in organisations because I know that there are people and there will be some of you on the webinar today that don't actually want that career advancement, don't want to go into those management kind of positions and you would prefer perhaps to have the variety of different types of role within your organisation. Now here, I think that there's a big difference between working in a smaller organization and working in a bigger organization. And I have um, been in both types of organization as well. Um, so for those of you who are in smaller organizations, I think um, likewise, I think it's really important to stay current um, and really think about um, you know, who do you know in terms of your networks? And, and what are the similar organizations where you may be able to transition into them? I remember years ago that when I was um, job searching and some of the key values for me were around my location. So I started with um, looking at who were those organizations nearby my home and where I reside because um, I reside in Auckland and for those of you who are also up here uh, you know we certainly you know it's not very pleasant when we have to travel long distances to work. Um, so do think about you know where are those opportunities to move and also what is happening in those organizations as well. Um, for those that are in large organizations, you know, I think that there's a wealth of opportunity here to really be leaning into um, finding your next place or finding your niche for now. And I've seen a lot of people, like even ones um, if they've been in customer service frontline roles, who they are very people um, persons and they enjoy dealing with uh, key customers, um, you know, in frontline roles, these are external customers, um, and then come into a role like change management, uh, because then you're dealing, you're still dealing with customers, but your customers tend to be internal stakeholders in the organization.
So do have a think about this in terms of your landscape and um, where you might be able to find a place as well. I think as well as that, um, you know, I've seen people in smaller uh, um, towns in New Zealand. Um, I do remember doing some outplacement work a number of years ago, and it was when there were uh, some organisations that were closing down um, their branches uh, in small town New Zealand. And dealing with some of those people um, in customer service roles, they were like, you know, there's no other types of this organization in my small town. So literally, I am redundant. I cannot find another job. Once again, you know, think about not your job title, but what are your transferable skills? So these people really valued themselves and thought that their main skill set was dealing with people in that customer service. So great. You know, what other types of organizations in your small town actually do and value that customer service aspect? And I do remember that, that one of the ladies that I was dealing with, she ended up getting a role in a school. Um, as the office manager and as the receptionist. So once again, using her administrative skills and her customer service skills as well. So remember, think broadly in terms of this. Just another couple of key points from this slide. Um, you know, we know that the key factors for engagement at work are around aligning your purpose with the organization. So do think about that. And do think about those moments when you're able to adapt what you're doing and adapt where you are and what might the opportunities be. Um, talk to other people. So as I mentioned before, use your networks, um, you know, both as an inroads to understanding what another um, job might be like. So what is it like working in a school versus working, uh, you know, in a retail organisation? Um, uh, and really just to kind of open up your options and think about where your place might be. Okay, well, let's move on to talking about um, what are some of the tips for businesses and organisations in terms of change management moving forward. And I think a really key thing, as I talked about earlier, uh, that, um, you know, with the emergence of a lot of change, which we know is not going to slow down, I think that the number one thing that your organisation can do is really to implement a comprehensive change management strategy. I refer um, through this webinar to ProSci. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with ProSci, it's one of the world's leading change management frameworks, which I'm licensed in. Um, and that has been around for about 25 or 30 years and has got some really good robust models and really good frameworks. But there are other change management training available in the marketplace. Um, a number of my of my peers I know go through APMG. Um, I think that the important thing is that you implement robust change man management strategy um, and also look to track and measure your change management maturity. So here this figure talks to the ProSide change management maturity model where at the bottom in level one, you've got quite a lot of disjointed projects um, and they're being rolled out really without key stakeholders understanding or knowing that they're coming um, and obviously they have a low chance of success versus the level fives where you've got really good robust processes and systems and controls um, and some good project teams as well. So, you know, change management isn't just done by change management, by change managers. It's done and needs, um, you know, good sponsorship, good senior managers, 
Um, it needs alignment through uh, the leadership levels, as well as the project team as well. And of course, some um, you know, great ProSci research that projects with excellent change management are seven times more likely to achieve change success. So that will um, always be a winner for you and your people as well. Look at a couple of other tools that you can use in terms of key change leadership principles. So first and most, I always think that it's really important to understand the people change experience. And I also want to acknowledge that I think that this is probably one of the hardest things to do. Um, I've seen leaders before really... Um, it, you know, try to t treat people in the same vein. Um, I think the intricacies of change management and change leadership is that people can be at different stages along a change curve. But the ProSci ADCAR model is really useful just to think of as a good model, thinking that, you know, before you roll through with a change, so say it might be a technical system that you're implementing in your organisation that people need to have awareness of that happening. They need to understand from that high level business requirements, why is the business implementing this? So for example, why are we going to the cloud and what are the risks of not doing it? And then people need to understand, okay, well, so for me and my job, um, what is the desire or the motivation for me? And how is this actually going to change in my role? So it might be that instead of working on an on-prem system, um, one of those legacy systems that many organizations have, that it will require understanding and becoming skilled in cloud um, technology. And that's your knowledge base. So how then am I going to get upskilled in this? So people need to understand that and have the confidence that they're going to be enabled to work in this new state. Now, process say that you need to have ticked off these things before you actually go live with a change. So that's the ability. So now I am operating, the system has gone live, now I'm going in and I'm actually operating in the cloud on this new system. And then of course, you know, you need that little bit of test and learn and that reinforcement of or the embedding of the change and certainly working out what are those change success metrics as well to reinforce that this has been the right change for the business and also the right change for me personally. So there, um, you know, do publicize and do have some of your own internal stories around what those successes are for the organization. So often with cloud technology, you know, we're talking about uh, reducing time to get some of the insights um, or where um, it actually enables a lot of different people to work in a system at once. All that I want to share with you is um, very much, you know, to do with people and how we go through change. So, you know, I talked earlier about how a lot of the time, um, I think that key resistance or a key obstacle is people really not feeling informed or feeling fearful about a change. And this curve here can be a really, really useful tool to actually help understand how people go through change. And I'm sure that there's some of you um, on the session today that are familiar with this curve. Um, and it is indeed taken from the grief cycle from a clinical psychologist researcher back in the 1960s called Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Uh, she was actually researching end of life patients and their whānau and came to recognise that there were um, different transitions that people went through. Um, not always out the other side in a successful way, as I'm sure people can appreciate, and also not always in a linear way. Um, 
but gradually these kind of models have come into organizations and I have um, particularly used this one over the last few years. It's really interesting, I think, for us individually to think about where we are, to think about how we're responding to change. But I also think have that confidence that, you know, going through change isn't actually going to feel straightforward. It's not going to feel comfortable. I am going to feel some resistance and I am going to have some questions as I work through this transition. And I think from, for leaders as well, um, I've had really good feedback from leaders that, that uh, it's kind of a light bulb moment thinking, yeah, actually my people are different and I need to be adapting my style to um, cater for the difference in people. And that's particularly around, you know, not just work changes as well. So I know that when I've presented this to people before, that people down that left-hand side, um, there were a couple of people that said that they are kind of stuck in this change at work and being able to transition forward because they were dealing with some personal grief. So do just think about, you know, those down the left. Do they understand the messages we know as well that you need to repeat key messages, that often when there's a lot of change going around, particularly the bigger the change, it means that it's even more important to be um, repeating some of those key messages and having that clarity for people. And then also, of course, around sometimes just providing that empathetic um, ear and saying, yeah, the system is really different, or if it's an organizational change, it is really uncomfortable when we know when we know we're going through a restructure. But how can I support you? Um, you know, what questions have you got? And I'll talk about that more um, in a minute as well. Right, well, let's have a look at a couple of other quick tools that you can use as leaders. So this next um, graph here, you know, I, I always think that there's one thing which is more important than change leadership when you're rolling through change. And that's actually for leaders in the organisation to be aligned. Um, I've seen a number of times, and I'm sure you can think of times as well, um, in the face of uh, change, where um, it may be a top-down driven change, but where, uh, you know, the people leaders, um, you're asking them about it and they have no response about it or they don't know. Think about the result that that has. Of course, it makes you feel more nervous and more fearful and uncertain. Of course, then in that silence, people um, uh, sort of uh, fill that with rumour, um, uh, sometimes facts that aren't necessarily true um, or uncertainty, you know, where you might think about then moving on and leaving the organisation and become a flight risk. So this, uh, this research here in this, this graph, um, once again from ProSci, talks to how it's really important to have those different messages from different layers of leadership in the organization. ProSci is based in America, so you get some quite Americanized terms here. But when it comes to um, the reason for the change, so say it might be a restructure in the organization, people want to hear about those businesses, business messages from the top tier people. So from the CEO or from the ELT. Where it comes to then, how is this going to impact me? Um, is my role safe? Um, what does it mean for my team, then people want to hear those messages from their own people leader. So I think as best you can, look to how you can align in this area um, to actually, uh, you know, have some of those key messages. And where I've seen this work really well is there to be that preparation done before a change is announced. So where the senior leaders, you know, have a session with the people leaders and cascade down what some of those key 
um, messages are and actually enable the people leaders to be having those conversations in their teams. Now, obviously, there's still likely to be further questions, but you can always circle back um, and fill in that communication gap and up pe update people um, with different uh, Q&A as well. And another key thing is really looking at then in terms of your role as um, change leaders, um, think about these key competencies that you can that you can do as well in your role. So, you know, communication I think is a bigger the biggest thing that I've seen. And the greater the change, and also the greater the noise, I think the more that it's important to communicate, not just what is changing but give people some certainty around what is not changing as well. Remember that flip between um, that sense of stability and that sense of still that culture and connection and that norm is really important, um, that not everything is changing. These are the things that we're still going to be doing, which is really important. Modeling that behavior is really important. Your role as a coach, um, also like managing that resistance. So I'm sure we've all heard of people who um, can be quite critical in the face of change. Sometimes you've got those black hat thinkers and they can be great people to bounce ideas off. Um, and often, you know, I've seen them that they're the ones that if it's a process change, they think, oh yeah, but what about this level in terms of how it impacts on our customers if it's a process change? Um, but also, you know, you've got to manage that resistance early so it doesn't then become a really negative environment. So sometimes that one-on-one -on -one is important too, to talk to them about it. Okay, and um, finally, um, here are some other key tips of things that you can do in terms of change leadership. So, you know, as I mentioned, you know, building this adaptive mindset is important both in ourselves and also as leaders. So I think that, you know, think about some simple ways that you can continually build the engagement and the well-being for your people. We know that when people feel connected, when they feel that they have that support of their leader, that they experience change in a more positive way. And we know the power of positivity in terms of our brains makes us feel actually more enabled to be able to um, navigate through the change and makes us actually lean into a learning mindset as well. Um, research also shows that that sense of servant leadership is really important. So I talked about that empathy and that sense of support earlier. You know, it's really critical that your people, and I've seen it time and time again in engagement survey results, that people feel as if their leader has their back. Now, as leaders, you don't have to have all of the answers. So remember that there, it's important to cascade the communication, but also lift up to your senior le um, le leaders or also into the project team around, hey, we've got these other questions. So we would, um, you know, really love a response around this so that we can fill in that gap for people and make them more enabled in terms of the change. Also, you know, that communication, have a think about that and how that's working for you, particularly that positive mindset and getting people to come on board on the change. I think there, you know, go back to that slide around who are we at work? So that's important for our own adaptiveness and our own sense of value and self-efficacy. But also think about your team members um, if you're a leader on this call. So what are the things you value in a specific person at work? Um, I remember going through a change and we were picking out some change champions and it was a, um, a technical change. Um, and, you know, some of the people that were picked weren't the best 
technical people. They didn't have the best technical skills, but they were really good role models. They were really good social people in the team. And so think about how you can provide that recognition and that value and use those types of people as well. And finally, you know, think about how actually you can build all of that culture, you know, the culture of adaptiveness. How can you track what's happening? How can you keep on top and respond to what some of the noise, some of the queries are? And how can you learn to actually then adapt what you're doing going forward so that you're continually building this trusting culture? You know, you're more active and visible and aligned, but you're also making sure that you've got that great engagement with people um, and also that well-being and that circle of feedback as well. Thank you very much everybody. I will have a look at some of the questions, um, but I hope that that's provided you, uh, you know, a really good basis to be thinking about the future context of work, both personally for yourself in terms of how you can keep navigating this going forward, um, your own thinking about yourself at work, but then certainly, uh, you know, from an organisational and leadership level, what some of those tips and tricks and tools might be um, to help you navigate and help your people navigate through this. So back to you. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you, Megan. You've certainly provided um, some in incredible insights and um, there's so much that I've taken away and, you know, some key things, self-reflection to build self-awareness, building adaptive thinking into our work lives, um, you know, the change management strategies that we take into, you know, the challenges that we face as we go, go through this repetitive change or ongoing change should I say, you know, how we handle things as leaders. Um, you know, one, one of the key things I think, um, you know, that I've written down for myself is, you know, I think it is uh, constantly challenging ourselves in a challenging world. And, you know, we know that um, as you as you opened your, your webinar um, or your presentation, you spoke specifically about the fact that change has always been there, essentially. It's just the different things that we face as, as, as times change. So thank you, Megan. On behalf of myself and our New Zealand-wide Beyond Recruitment team, I'd like to say thank you for all of our attendees. I wish you all the best as we navigate our next steps through the other side of particularly this downtown. Uh, transformational organizations and socioeconomic uh, changes. And as we prepare ourselves, our teams and our organizations beyond the ongoing change, um, you know, it will be great to take your, your tips and tools away with us. Just a reminder that this webinar has been recorded and we will send every person attending a recorded copy in the next two days. We also look forward to hosting more he webinars with Megan next year, hopefully, Megan. So once again, a huge thank you, Megan, and a huge thanks to our attendees. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.